Welcome to the Jen and Margie Show. I'm Margie Wigan, and this week we have guest host... Mike Terosian. Mike Terosian. And we are happy to have you join the conversation. We really would love it if you would call in as we're talking about our different segments. Um, the phone number is 781-435-7880. Sorry. 508. 508. I was just seeing if you were listening. Yes. That's live. 508-435-7880. And the email is live at hchem.tv. So we are happy you're here. Our first segment is going to be about school opening, school opening traffic, calming. traffic calming. How's that working for you? <laughs> and um, we'd love to have you give your opinion. We have our opinions. And we are joined by the lovely Lisa Jackson, who is going to have um, really stay with us through the whole show. Because we're going to start with traffic calming conversation. And then we're going to talk about... Um, Hurricane Harvey and how you can help and are we prepared here in the Boston area for that kind of storm as well as the last segment um, which is going to be leaf peeping fall foliage tours so we're so happy really you join us yeah thank yeah. you thank you yeah so traffic calming um, I have to say when I well, I used to drop my daughter off uh, until she got a car which was nice and also challenging at the same time but so we would pull into that left lane yeah <laughs> which is now blocked with all kinds of horses and cones and because right. we were thinking everyone else is going straight we're going to get out of that right. line so that's going straight so we don't block the their the traffic yeah. and then we're going to calmly turn into the high school and the traffic guy would wave us or not wave us and we weren't sure what his plan was right. but now it's all blocked up so what do you think about that? We'll start with Lisa because you're still actively right. My daughter there. goes to the Hopkinton Middle School, so I interface with the uh, high school traffic, um, and it's it's actually worse than last year um, because I think it's it's hard for people to get by you that are doing the regular commute, and really in that location, there's no other way around it. Right. So I think it, it's a congested traffic area anyway. So I think having the cones or, or whatever. I'm not sure the purpose of them. Was that to have more safety for children on the on the sidewalks? I my my guess was they're trying to not have that random which lane is this person going to be in? Yeah. Are they going into the right lane? Are they cutting by these right. people? Are they turning? Are they not turning? Oh, so just keep it so safer I think it's so safer. you don't have that. Keep it, open, keep it open off the road. Plus, it also keeps the road wide enough for emergency vehicles. Sure, of course. Well. Hmm. Yeah, so, but it sounds like rather than calming, doing that. Yeah. it's congested yeah. Yeah. and and maybe more stressful than calming. Right. Um, so well, what do you let, think? Let me tell you something. For a person not dropping off children anymore right. at either school, uh, but driving by in the morning, I used to dread. I'd look at the time. Mm. I would I'd go around somewhere else right. as long Ash as I got to go through yeah. there. <laughs> but uh, one thing that I found today coming out uh, during release, um, I thought it was just about the same I didn't see much difference except for the year. cones right right and, and I did look inside as I went by mm -hmm. as I was getting waved through of course mm -hmm. um, I did notice a lot less confusion inside but the buses were already gone so well and I also I think wrong. that there's a less traffic uh, you know normal traffic flow that time of day True. right so morning you have but a I'm higher traffic flow and then and where I'm used to going up it, at that time yeah I noticed, I would say, oh, my God, I can't believe it's 2 o'clock. Why am I doing this? Yeah. So, so that's interesting to me because I thought the traffic calming would affect the morning. So when everyone's coming in, because that, yes. that blocked off area really doesn't affect the afternoon at all because everyone's leaving. Right, but they're picking up. And the ones that are picking oh. up would be queued there as well. And they're and queued to come in the second. Right. So they have to come around to the hospital. I've only side. picked up once this this year so far, but it, or this semester, but it was it was pretty it was longer than it had been previously. But I mean, the start of the school year it always takes time for everybody to kind of right. get used to oh. the pattern, and sure. so I think there's a, a factor there. I see it every year early on in, well, it's nice in that the they season. Were, they got out with the information ahead of time. Yep. They drew some yes. maps. Uh, the middle school they had uh, Girl Scouts actually for a project made a video on how to drop off and pick oh, up. Oh, interesting. Uh, That's perfect. I love Girl Scouts. Um, they were amazing, and they came up with uh, all the tips, because you see it. And Where did the, they post that? Thing. Where was that? 
I'm not sure where it's posted now, but it uh, should be up on the school website. Maybe HMS TV. So Maybe HMS someone TV in that control room could tell us. I didn't know anything about that video, but that's a, that's so great that they that's, did that. That's great. It, it was it was uh, a lot of work. It was a couple of days of filming, and uh, a lot of time putting it together with instructions. We even had a drone get some aerial footage uh, for us as well. Um, it, it's a dangerous place. I was doing the camera work on the first day on the um, drop-offs, and they have the blue lane right. for dropping off. Mm -hmm. And then well, the high school would, students are yeah, coming around the edge to park. They would come in yeah. a little heavy on the pedal sometimes, but we noticed the other parents that would drop says, oh, I don't need this blue lane, and they come in towards the doors, the right. side doors next to the water tank. Yeah. Then... That's oh, where in the, the middle kids school. are crossing. Right. And it's, yeah, it's it, a crossing. It's, it's bad. That so whole from, area I'm sorry, is tough. Oh, I'm sorry. That whole area. I mean, I do traffic flow patterns for emergency dispensing sites right. and shelters, mm -hmm. and that area is very challenging. I mean, like, it, it, part of it is is because the exit. So everything kind right. of backs like up building. at the exit. You know, to me, it seems like it would behoove people to take a right sure. and go through the high school because yeah. that traffic seems That's to much move a little plan. bit better at the high school. I mean, when I have somewhere to go, you know, sometimes I go south for a meeting. Sure. I'll take a right and cut through the high school just because that traffic pattern. I mean, there's it's someone that, actually on the street right. that, that is managing the traffic a little bit better. But this morning I went to Lowe's after I dropped off Celia and it was a line of traffic all the way to Chestnut. I mean, it was, wow. yeah. So right. it was it was pretty significant and I've never seen it that you know. and, and one thought, I, a couple thoughts. One thought is maybe this will encourage more kids to take the bus. Right. So the parents who right. are, you know, trained to drop off their kids who right. should be on the bus or something else may say, okay, you need to take the bus. I can't wait in that traffic. Right. So that would alleviate the, the traffic congestion I mean, if there are fewer cars. I'm not going to say it's not showing my age, but the walking to school, granted we do have the sidewalks. I just don't understand what now. If I was driving from the other side of town, dropping my kid, my off, house is a little tough. I'd to be walk. dropping exactly. them off. Exactly, we can't. I'd walk. be yeah. dropping them off downtown and let them walk up the street yeah. to, or something. To stay away, because right. I don't want to deal with that traffic. I agree. And and plus, I, I'd see their friends and things right. like that. I mean, now, middle schoolers and high schoolers certainly that's an option. Now I know the kids are so busy today that they have their instruments, their hockey sticks. They right, have their, they have a lot to carry. Lot to carry. Okay, I get that. They For need example, those little. They, don't let they them need on those the little bus. wheelie carts wheelie that, carts, that ladies, you know, old ladies yeah. have in the grocery store. So, yeah. for example, Celia plays the trombone. She cannot Whoa. take the bus right, right. When she, with her trombone. Oh. So there's a certain size limit um, to right. what Clar clarinet and smaller. I think it is. Yeah. Right. yeah. Which is difficult because sure. a lot of kids pay, play guitars. Yes. I mean, they play. I mean, we have a huge band. Yes, it's you a know, wonderful band. It, it is a wonderful band. 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 So, but it's yeah. that also creates a lot of congestion. So it's it's hard, you know. And, and their backpacks. I mean, nothing right. to be said. I mean, the kids' right. backpacks are way better, yep. bigger than when we were kids. And what I was going to mention was um, Sue at Parmenter was talking to me about travel. You know, going across that at oh. that crosswalk that even right. if you're in the crosswalk, I've seen kids try to cross right there. Yeah. And, you know, her con her quote was, they're taking their lives in their hands, and cool. she has to go to get the mail across the street for some reason. Which? So which car, the one that, that is right on the corner? Where yes. Right at the corner. Of they have, the, the, there's a crosswalk There is a crossing guard. That That's the other side, but I'm talking the parameter side. Uh, right now, well, I don't even notice kids the cross mail. there, because I think they, yeah. they divert they that. They do both. Right. That's a, right. They yeah. do both. The mail... <laughs> It's funny you say the mail. Yeah. She just had her mailbox moved to. Oh, thank the God. Side of the street. Well, that's what I said when I was there. Is yeah. why is your why is it's, the mailbox on the other side of the street, which is so dangerous. Scary. It is. It is. Scary. So they got it's it moved. Thank God. It, it's a tough intersection because everyone's going so much faster. And uh, right. I've only been around for thirty years, and when it was the flashing light there. Uh, the traffic oh. was a little slow because that was always 20 miles an hour. Full time, it 20 miles an be. hour. Should but be. Should be. But now that there's more traffic, the traffic goes through faster. Right. So now it's a faster speed through there and it's being allowed. Mm -hmm. When you have that faster speed and all the distractions, it's it's just 10 times It's very slower. dangerous. And back to the distractions, cell phones and people yeah. are talking mm -hmm. on the phone yeah. and they're, yeah. you know, I mean, all of us. You know, on my more way <laughs> by the school today and all the middle schools and high schools leaving that are walking down yeah. Grove Street, texting and walking. That's even yeah. worse. Of that course. Is even Step worse. off yep. a curb yep. and, yeah. and, yeah. Not paying yeah, yeah, attention. Yeah. No, is that the purpose of the cones then? So no. To the protect cones? Cones just keep the cars off. 
Cones are because they want one lane, okay. so it's theoretically a calmer traffic flow because there's only one right. lane to control. Correct. Um, it's more manageable. But I didn't realize that they, why isn't, that whole area should be at the 20 mile an hour speed limit for a school zone, shouldn't it? Right. It is during the school when the lights are flashing. Right. Okay. That's right. That's when, right. It, that's when it's like prominent. That. Okay. That's, that's what I thought. But it used to be a full time 20 mile an hour right. zone. Right. All the time. All the time. And I don't know if it's still posted at 20 or 30, know. but um, I, I learned some during these traffic studies and traffic calming that's mm -hmm. been going on. Uh, I've learned that if the traffic allows for a faster speed, then the speed gets changed. And right. there's nothing that can be done about well, it. Well, isn't that, I think I remember the fundamental speed law from when I was right. in driver's ed. Oh, so by any school. I right, agree. the speed, yeah. you know, the use of the way and sure. the traffic conditions and... That's it. Um, That's it. Oh, yeah. it out. Hey, so you should be going slow. If any of you watching have an opinion on this, we would love to hear what you think. Do you think it's working well, the traffic calming pattern? Is it making it more difficult for you? Do you think you can adjust? Do you have any comments or suggestions? We would love to have you join us. 508-435-7880 uh, or live at hcam.tv. Please join us. Let us know what you think. Yeah. So I haven't seen the morning yet. I will see that on Friday for the first time. Uh -huh. I'm not looking forward to it, but yeah. we'll see how it goes. Right. Um, I think the alternative if, piece is a big deal. And, and it generally, people slow down with dropping off their kids right. as school gets more in session. Right. Or, or, you know, people get used to their routines. Right. And I think, you know, initially everybody's trying to hustle out the door and, you know, they're not sure about bus times. I mean, sure. although the bus busing system is great, but I think a lot of parents that... It, the two three week shuffle is kind of right. I'm at the beginning, the kids want to wonder too when the when the high school they have their hill of day their last Friday or whatever Friday it is that the seniors come in at second period. Right. And oh. I wonder how much traffic that alleviates because great mm. those guys are going in. Right. They're not waiting to drop off, but right. I don't know how much you know. It's less a lot of them parking the parking at the middle school because I see right. the you know the yeah. older kids. I'm yeah. not sure if they're all, seniors or not. They, have all, yeah, the they all have their assigned yeah. lot. Yeah. Assigned gotcha. Lots, yeah. Usually those are the juniors. But they don't the seem that disruptive. That no. that group of kids because right. they're not leaving. Well, we just, I mean the leaving is where the problem is. If they yeah. come in and park, then it's not. I'm yep. thinking just the quantity of cars on the road. I'm oh, it is. It. Oh, yeah. It seems it's way tough. more than last year. I mean, and I take Celia to school quite a bit because right. of the trombone, and she does jazz band and regular. Right. So she, that's great. Yeah. She well, I'm, not the traffic, but no, that's no, great that she, she's in those. She's so involved in that's so much. That's wonderful. But, but yeah, it's. I think there's you know room for adjustment, and right. I think making an awareness level to the community of right other options, and you know, and I, I do understand the traffic calming you know, for the safety, and particularly where that child got hit on Hayden Row. Sure. I mean, I think yeah. that was probably a preceptor to some of that. Yeah, it's it's going to be a situation where, you know, it's really up to these parents, I'm going to put it into their lap, oh, yeah. that they, they need to really start thinking about carpooling. Yeah. Um, well, take the bus. The down because, you know, you know, and you've seen it, when there's a play at the school, oh, yeah. mom comes, then dad comes, right. then the grandparents come. Um, There's three cars for one kid. Right. Yeah. You so know? you're talking so, about in the evening. So, well, I'm just saying that in that's general. that's in general. So yeah. now let's apply it to school. You know that I'm taking my kid, you're taking your kid, but why can't you guys work out a little carpool play? Right. And yeah, it's, it's hard, everyone's working, but you would think that would make it easier, you know? It why, does make it easier. Why drop off really? Listen, oh, you're working, let's, let's work this out. I mean, yes. I, I just don't know why they can't come together like that. And that's... My thought is that's what will happen as people realize this is a pain. Right. You know, we're, yeah. we can't get there on time. We have to hurry. Everyone's in a bad mood. Let's figure it out. You know, and that, honestly, the bus is more effective. Bus time wise, is I mean, so much more effective. Yeah, when I don't have to, you right. know, drop off or pick up, like the bus right. is absolutely more effective. She yeah. gets home faster. Yeah, if she's not waiting, I mean, right. on, from the kid's side as well. So I think, you know, maybe kids also should talk to their parents. Cause exactly. Think, you know, we, we want to take care of our kids. We want to do stuff for our kids. But I think also, you know, the bus is, is a good alternative. I think so, too. And, and, you know, if you think about it just seems to me so much more efficient in terms of mm -hmm. gas, so environmentally. Yeah. 
You're not putting all these Time. cars on the road. They're not idling with the exhaust fumes yeah. going in the air. Sure. So it's better environmentally. It's better yeah. socially because they're on the bus. Okay, granted, maybe they're all on their cell phone, but maybe some of them aren't and they're right. having a conversation. Right, right. Um, you know. And yeah, that's just the big picture. But and look, realistically, we need to cut down that morning traffic. That's, yeah. right. That is a, a killer. Yeah. It's um, in, you know. I'm not driving to Boston every day and spending an hour and a half, <laughs> you know, going to work. I right. left so from that, there. But I mean, that extra five minutes, right? Yeah. What we're used to to get through town, that yeah. extra five minutes, or more. It, it, it is it, it it is aggravating, right? Um, because I think the people are just oblivious to their surroundings and not thinking of their own needs. Moving, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not well, thinking of the no surroundings. No planning. I mean, I think yeah. there's a lot of people that. You know, I mean, they just respond or react instead right. of planning a lot True. of times. And the other thing is, I think, was it Pat Pat O'Brien who said when he moved here in, maybe it wasn't him, someone moved here in, I want to say, 97 or 98 no, or something. Say a lot longer than that. Somebody so. said that. And so at that time, it was 7,500 well, in town. When I came in town in, in... Maybe it was you. Yeah, when I came in town in 87, there was 8,500 people. So it means you. One traffic light. Exactly. Two flashing lights. When, we, when I moved here, it was 14,000. Okay. And so. now it's 75,000 or something? No, oh, no, 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 no. It's 17? 60. Yeah, 16? Well, it's 16 or 17. Okay, so I'm making up numbers. There you go. All right. <laughs> it's fake news. So 8,500 <laughs> to 14 to 16... Right. So the so everything has doubled from right. when you got here, and I think people people aren't planning because they're thinking how how it was, or they're used to doing things a certain way. Yeah. So it's just, just an awareness adjust. level, and it's a good conversation, you know, to get right. it out to the public and get them thinking about alternatives. Yeah. Let's let's carpool. Let's uh, take the bus. Walk. Let's do yeah. walk. Walking is great. I know. Fire. Ride a bike. Always, hey. She always wants to go. She wishes. She's like, Mom, I right. wish I could walk. I know. I agree. every day we Do walk. they have parking for Steve? Maybe she can take. Steve. Yeah, <laughs> he would love that. He just eat grass be, all day. Well, that's what I worry about. You know, along. You, I would love to see a sidewalk. Come yeah, all the I, way down to the Ashland line <laughs> right. from the center of town because right. then people could the walk. To they could ride a horse right. yep. uh, or That'd something. Awesome. Right. That'd yeah. Be fantastic. A bike. Yeah. Well, we're so. just about up with time on this yep. segment here. So, uh, folks at home, we're going to take a little break. We'll be right back. And then come on and join the conversation. We're going to talk about emergency preparedness and yep. how to help with the hurricane. Storyteller uh, as well as comedian Wes Hazard brings God. wit, energy, uh, and honesty to the studio. Uh, so I was there for the entire festival, three days, and I got a unique insight into Boston, like uh, how amazing Boston is, and also how eternal Boston is. Because even amongst uh, all of that geekery and nerddom, I saw full Boston essence uh, on display. This week on the Golden Pan. Masha, Lisa, and Pat give us a lesson on making potato knockies. Sopping it up. There's a lot of, everybody at Sweet is on. But I would think once you've made the dough and you're making, you're in that process of making them, I would want to make like a, another one just so I can throw it in the freezer. Exactly. You could either freeze the dough or the, uh, the yucky, whatever you want. This week on All About Hockey, Muscular Dystrophy Association Senior Fundraiser Coordinator Jenny Richards tells us about upcoming events and some new advancements in finding a cure for muscular dystrophy. This has ever happened in this area, so we're really excited about that. So basically it'll be a bunch of fire departments competing to see who can make the best chili and everybody is welcome to buy a ticket and come to the event. It's unlimited chili and then you get to vote for the best fire department. And we're back. Welcome back. Again, please join the conversation, 508-435-7880. We're going to talk about Hurricane Harvey, the disaster there, are we prepared here, and how you can help. And we have with us our lovely, I keep saying that, I'm sorry. That's okay. Fabulously intelligent and all kinds of other wonderful it's adjectives. Oh, yes, thank I love you. Um, but so the reason we asked Lisa is because I know she has been involved in in uh, disaster help Work before, for 13 years, 13 years mm -hmm. such as 9 11. She yep. was on the front lines of 9 11. Yep. And Boston um, Marathon mm -hmm. and Nemo and 
Fema Katrina and, yeah. yeah, Rita and All those lots of uh, Haiti. We sent some Doctors Without Borders down mm. to Haiti. So we've been pretty involved in most of the major disasters one way or another, you know, through partner organizations. Um, the Medical Reserve Corps is a local asset and it's considered a local asset. Um, and there's um, over 250,000 volunteers across the wow. country. It's a countrywide network. I love that. Um, and it's um, locally based. Um, so we, we do offer resources, but we're really identified as a local resource. Um, we do, obviously, for our volunteers, if they want to deploy through other agencies, that is helpful to us because that builds response capacity right. for those volunteers. Because luckily, I mean, when I watched um, Sandy come up the coast. Right, oh my that, gosh. That, you know, that was our, that was our Katrina, and right. now Harvey, but it, right. I was watching that come up, and if it would have hit us, right. I mean, it, we would have, you know, we would have had the same thing. And, you know, people, luckily in Hopkinton, were a little bit outside mm -hmm. of the, most of the impact zone, but there have been hurricanes that have crossed yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Andrew, a right. good example, sure. yeah. that crosses land and is very devastating. And um, certainly Irma that's coming around, um, that, oh. um, you know, that's a very high-level hurricane. And we're watching that very closely to see what is happening. And, you know, you need to listen to your local emergency management when they tell you to leave. Absolutely. You know, you need to listen to mm -hmm. public officials. The news is okay. It's it's decent information, but right. really the public officials are the ones that are the public information officers, and they get the information out. And another very key part, um, we want people to be prepared. Right. We want them to be prepared with food for 72 hours. We want them to be prepared without power for 72 hours. And unfortunately, as time goes on, we're more and more dependent yeah. on power. Right. Um, so those are things that are so important. And we don't want to be taking care of people like ourselves in a disaster. We want to take care of those folks that cannot take Elderly care of themselves. And, right. so, would, so would you suggest um, a place... A, a safe place in the basement that you would have a jug of water, it, or what would you suggest? Well, let's, well, let's, let's see if we take it one step further. What yeah. would you start? How would you start to be prepared for I mean, no power for right? Two days? So, a great field of information is really ready.gov. Um, it's, it's the FEMA website, it has a plethora of preparedness information. You can get free handouts if you want to give it out to businesses, if you want to give it out to co workers, seniors in your family. There's pet preparedness. Um, all kinds of information and really it, it starts at home so you you know you want enough for 72 hours so water mm -hmm. you know obviously food that's not perishable um, you know tools you know what I mean things like that sure. you're supposed to you have extra clothing in case you have to evacuate so mm -hmm. kind of a bug out bag or a go kit um, and then certainly if you shelter in place it depends on your basement right. where Margie and I live. You know the basements are a little wet, so that's probably not an ideal place. Right. But you know that you could put it up high. You go through it biannually. You go through it every six months and rotate batteries out of it. Um, a key key thing is really um, a flashlight yeah. that has a radio and that has a hand crank. Right. So you know there's so many products out there. They're very inexpensive. A lot of those hand crank radios. Also, charge your cell phone. Mm -hmm. They're oh. a radio and they're a flashlight. So, that's cool. and some of them may have a whistle on them, things like that. So, and, and another thing that's really important is a communication plan with your family. Yeah. Um, right. So, you know, and that's also on uh, ready.gov. Um, and that will, you can print it off, you can put, you know, like a little, you know, card in your children's pa backpacks. No one knows phone numbers anymore. Yeah. So, I would say print off your important contact list laminate it have it available yeah. this is not going to be any cloud if there's no power. no no and, and wi-fi goes down very yeah, quickly i mean sure the the ice storms that we had in 2008 that wiped out everything right and that was a pretty i mean many people were without power for a month yeah i mean we missed it by hot with hopkinton so but lucky. once you drove over 495 i was mm -hmm. managing those shelters out in the western part of the state mm. And it was, you know, it's very difficult. And, you know, and, and one thing that is an issue that always comes up during disasters, and I managed the shelter out in um, Springfield after the um, tornado. Yeah, um, Springfield. People donate goods. And it, it really, 
is not effective. Um, you know, we, we came up with a part, you know, you can donate to Salvation Army, things right. like that. But yeah. people were dropping off things at the shelter, and yeah. that turned mm -hmm. into chaos. Yeah, anyway. and I'm like, I don't want yeah. my volunteers doing this. This right. is, you know. It's taking time. Yeah, it's taking time, and, and a lot of the things weren't used. And, and I've, I mean, I've probably got 100 calls since Harvey of what, what should I do? And I said, really, the key thing is diapers, formula, yep. Right. Yep. you know, those things um, that you can donate. And, and from us, from Massachusetts, again, they're not going to transport things down to Texas or Florida if they're if they're given items. I mean, you may get a truckload that you donate from, you know, St. Paul's or a church or things like that that are organized to take a semi down there. Salvation Army is an incredible resource for things like right, that. Exactly. Um, so those things are really important to know because people see the things on the news. They think people need that. And unfortunately, that becomes part of the disaster. So um, one, one of the things that I want to know is, and you, you brought it up about listening to the news. Yes. What about getting those alerts ahead of time? Is there there ways is to an get amazing, them? amazing. Okay, so in Hopkinton, we have, I don't know what it is, Code Red or CTY. Code red. Yeah, we have Code Red in Hopkinton, so that can go over a landline. And the key with Code Red is to make sure that you actually, your number's registered with the police station. So that's a that's a key factor. So you do get that messaging. Right. So whether you live in town or work in town yep. or have children that go to school in town, yep. you can register your phone. You don't need How, to be a register, register with what? The you police department. The, the right. There's website, a website. Hopkinma.gov yep. uh -huh. and you can click on the code red okay. symbol. So, register all your phones. So I know that was a little hard to understand. So you want to go to hopkintonma.gov oh. and register with code red if it's you on want right yours on yeah. the website um, yeah, registered yeah. to the police department. And you can do your cell phones, yep. you mm -hmm. can do emails. Your kids' phones. Kids' or... phones. And you don't yep. have, like I said, you don't have to live in town. If you right. work in town or your kids go to school in town. Yep. yep. Because people don't know that. Right. And then if I can back up, um, ready.gov, is that R-A-D-I? It's, sorry, ready. my Idaho accent, ready. ready. That's okay. Sorry, so, R-E-A-D-Y. How do we spell it? Oh, so like ready. ready. R -E -A. I'm sorry. My, no, it's fine. I'm just trying to, no, no, no. I just trying <laughs> to, accent. I just want to make sure everybody knows. So ready, R-E-A-D-Y dot gov. Correct. And, and there's another amazing alert that MEMA has. Okay. And it's a ping alert. So okay. you go on, you look at MEMA ping. Okay, MEMA. And, as, as an app, and you'll get a ping alert, and it actually uses yeah. GIS system. Oh, yeah. Yep, like yep. And, and it'll tell you wherever you are. So say you work in Gloucester, and there's an event in Gloucester, you'll you'll get a ping alert there. But if you're in Hawkington, you wouldn't get the alert. It would actually, the GIS system would pick that up. It wouldn't up. ping you here. So yeah. you go to mima.gov? Yeah, you can. To you, register no, for you go to your app on your phone. Okay. I mean, you can find it on mima.gov, but that's a little... So is it a Mima app? It is. Okay, Mima. So app. it's and right. just Mima Ping, P I N G. Okay, it is Mima Ping. Yeah, and so that's what you look up, and that is probably one of your best um, lines of communication. Okay, and then the other question is in terms of, I was trying to get to actual numbers of gallons. So, how many gallons of water would you recommend for a 72 hour? A gallon a day per person. A gallon a day per person. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, a gallon a day per person. So, okay. it's pretty easy to have bottled water. I. Simple as filling up a bathtub, if you know that. I've heard it, that. You know, and we have <laughs> If you're going to stay there. Right. Well, that's it. If you shelter in place, but yeah. it's not a big deal to have the water available for you. Sure. Um, you know, in a crunch, if you don't have the water available, you know, you, you and actually if, if you have town water and the power goes down, you're not going to have water because right. the pump's not going to work. And then a lot of communities, uh, sewer, wastewater treatment plant is near the water supply so then sometimes the water can get contaminated right. so there are you know factors that you should have and then yep. a really simple way is power bars or mm -hmm. or Food, protein bars to, as long as the mice can't get to them so you right. need to store them and, and in and a another box. really really key thing <laughs> and i mean hopkinton has less disaster situations that we could potentially have but we do have the lng facility right which is a big big deal um yes. so you know the thing is is you want to have all your documents everything's mm, digital mm. i mean i have everything on a thumb drive but then i have celia's right. birth certificate in a yeah. laminated yeah. yeah um 
like in a piece metal of paper. box or something. Yeah, Ziploc bags. I mean, okay. believe it or not, work yeah, great. Right. I mean, fantastic. Ziploc bags. But if you work. have a fire, you're going to lose that Ziploc. Right. I mean, but you have it in a few places. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I always recommend having those important documents out of town. Or uh, with a family out of state. I mean, mm -hmm. those are important along with those emergency numbers. So, excuse me, we got an email and Great. someone was asking if uh, do we have local resources in Hawkinson for mm -hmm. disasters? What are the local resources? Well, um, the Good question. The fire department has been amazing. So Gary Doherty, mm -hmm. our long time ago chief, was very active in emergency preparedness. Then Ken Clark kicked picked it up. Mm -hmm. We have a special situation because of the Boston Marathon that right. starts here. So yeah. we have a significant amount of resources. We're used to dealing with all kinds of, you know, just really moving people, um, dealing with disasters, because um, we deal with it kind of every year. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? We have a particularly mm -hmm. high rate of you know, just a lot of things that most communities don't have. So we have a lot of resources and a lot of people know us. You know what I mean? Um, and then also, we you know, our middle school is our primary shelter and okay. emergency dispensing sure. site. We've done sheltering drills and we've Remember, done, we yep, did yeah, that first drill many, yeah, yeah, yeah. And many most, years ago. most people don't know that, so many that's interesting right. to know. We did the first drive through emergency dispensing site at the mm -hmm. middle school. So that, and that was back in 2006. So and now it's a practice that we do pretty often. Um, mm -hmm. So there are certain things that we look at that, you know, in Hopkinton, we do have a lot of resources available. We have a lot of people that are willing to help out. Right. Um, Hopkinton is part of a regional medical reserve corps. Um, it needs to always be fed and nourished. And so a way, if you want to volunteer, is you go to um, www.maresponse.org, and that will connect you with whatever community you want to be um, to associated you. with. Um, so that that's one way if you work in Boston and, or... And where this is, it's the Medical Reserve Corps, it's not just for medical professionals right. because myself, where, yeah, I'm a first responder, right. but I'm not a nurse, I'm not an EMT. Right. But I did security, I did truck driving. Right. That they need, and, and they we need, need all sorts of people for that. We need five people per one clinical per person. One clinical and that's, person, that's, that's right. the, what we yeah. look at. And so for an example of a community like Hopkinton, um, we've had one shelter here, Ken ran it. It was a quick little turnaround shelter. Um, and, and, you know, practicing it and make sure you understand where it is, you understand the rules and what's, um, and what's allowed. It was interesting out of that came a showering policy <laughs> because we didn't know how to handle, you know, just simple logistical things like that. So the training and the information you can learn about. But um, if you, if anybody's ever interested, I run hundreds, literally hundreds of training and drills throughout the year, you can connect with me through my website, which is www.mrcvolunteer.org. That's so great. So there's, I mean, we have a big drill coming up, a mass casualty drill at Logan Airport coming up. Mm -hmm. We have a four-day drill down in Falmouth, oh, at, Falmouth with National Guard. Right yeah, so we, I mean, we're always doing stuff across the state. So, and, and I mean, really the key is, and, and I, if anything, anybody gathers out of this, is really that people prepare themselves. I mean, that's the most important thing. Even if you're a volunteer, if I called Mike or Margie and they they wanted to respond, first thing I would ask is, are you secure at home and do you have everything you right. need? And if they said no, I wouldn't deploy them. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's and you'd be surprised how many people that are volunteers don't necessarily take the time or other think, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I usually tell people September is preparedness month. Nice. It's a, it's a great right. well, month. It's perfect. Yeah. Can we have you in yeah. now. So September is preparedness month, and, you know, we could have something like Harvey. We could have something like Irma. Uh, you know, I mean, we live on the coast. That segues to the next email. Yeah. Is Massachusetts preparing now for Irma? Is we are. I mean, there. I was on a conference call today. We were talking about it. We are just kind of waiting. You know, like with any hurricane, even Sandy, we didn't know until almost the last right. minute. It turned, I mean, and they can turn. Oh, yeah. I mean, so you watch it. You prepare. I mean, right. my volunteers yeah. are on alert. I send out information about hurricane preparedness and, and things like that. But, you know, honestly, in the last, say, six or seven years, there's absolutely been an increase in... It's so random now, too. Yeah, I mean, it looks it's, like it's going to come, and they're not 
structure yeah. and then it turns this way and that way. And but the storms are getting bigger. Bigger storms, and, 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 more and, and violent. The thing is, is, you know, like with all of the construction that we've done with cities, the infrastructure oh. is old. So there are a lot of factors that come into play when a disaster mm -hmm. happens. And, and there's planning that go many multiple levels. Right. So there's local planning with, with your local emergency management um, team here in Hopkinton. That's all your town leaders. Then there's generally an REPC that does regional planning. Yep. There's public health coalitions. Amazing. There's homeland security um, organizations. There's, we work with MEMA. We work with FEMA. You know, there's, you know, it's a pretty integrated response. And I would say from when I started 13 years ago, it has, an, it has that communication has improved and that cross train the, has the, improved. It's amazing. The interoperability, uh, the, the oh, funding and the grants uh, yeah. that allow this interoperability to happen between all disciplines. They do. Uh, and now we're this, co combining HMCCs. And now we just keep, it keeps on building and building. Yeah. And it just makes it so much easier to communicate first. It's like, well, I can't get anybody over there. Yeah. Oh, no, now, it, now you can. It's just well, you do so communication easier. drills. And we I mean, practice it. We yeah. practice it. Yeah. We just did one um, uh, last I week I had one South today. I was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have to say that um, I heard Governor Baker on the news yeah. today who sure. said they, they're deploying or I don't know what, sending, um, Mass Maritime is sending a boat yes. to yeah. house the FEMA workers yep. down there. Yeah. Which works and awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, and that's the quote that amazing. What I wrote down was that he was so happy to see these these state connections you know, mm -hmm. this is exactly what should happen is everyone should come out and work together right. you yeah. know, and, and help each other. We cross-train with Mass Maritime. Yeah. I have taught classes at Northeast Maritime. Like sure. we, It's great. Yeah, so it, those are things, you know, that generation coming up. I think, you know, obviously my daughter knows about it and, like, Darlene's son knows about it because he's in Mass Maritime. But right. the thing is, is most kids have no clue. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I do a lot of talks at colleges and universities, and I ask them, I think this is always profound. I'm like, how do you get information about the weather or disasters? Yeah. They say Facebook. Yeah. Which, I mean, as long as you're... <laughs> or the news. Or my parents or, or, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. it's, they don't say the news. I mean, oh, I've talked to so many neat. college students, and they do not watch the news. Oh, so yeah. that's something... You you know, I mean, you need a radio. So, yep. I mean, once your Wi-Fi guy is down, you're, That's it. you know, and the cell towers go down very I just want to say one more yeah. thing, yeah. which is, I heard today, it's not just Irma, there's a J name yep. and Katya yeah. hurricanes forming yep. oh, sure. in the yeah, Gulf. They, and so the right now there are three. Down there. It's hurricane season. I mean, there yeah, are three it's, forming it's right season. this very I moment. I when they had to go to the second I, list after Z. Yeah. And, and I, had a, I had a friend move down to Florida mm -hmm. just before three hurricanes hit all at yeah. once. Right. <laughs> and they're very prepared down there. We, I've yeah. taken a lot of ideas from them over the years. Um, they would have to be. You know, because they're used to the preparedness. People are used to dealing with it down there. Um, yeah. And they know to evacuate. They know to board up. They yeah. know to be prepared. Yeah. And, I mean, that's one thing that I need to reiterate is, you know, if you are asked to evacuate, get out of there. Right. Oh, well, my gosh. Yeah, would, get out. Would you we know? Ask you that, that's great for this next email. Just yeah. give it, does Hopkins have any issues such as being in a flood? Or a hurricane zone or something uh, like that. Right. Well, yeah. we've had microbursts. Um, yeah. We could easily have ice storms. We've had snow storms. I've been without power as many as eight days. Right. Well, one, one thing know, that's one thing I had a tree stuff, fall on my we, house. We do, have, yeah. we do have some flooding issues. Right. But as far as the major floods, we happen to be the we're highest point in Middlesex right. County. We're not, that's why we're <laughs> in the hillers. Right. Well, and it's I funny my daughter right asked right now, about it, but, you know, we can have <laughs> tornadoes because right. yes. we've had them in Western well, Mass. We had microbursts actually on the trail, sure. the center trail. Oh. I mean, but, uh, ice let's... storms are probably probably one of your most detrimental mm -hmm. um, factors. Which, which is where most of those things would be want to come up with a shelter plan oh absolutely you know, definitely for the home yeah shelter yeah. in place or you know obviously that's you don't, filling your bathtub with, yeah. the, with the water yeah and staying out of your basement i mean if there, there's two different factors you need to understand oh, what right. what um what each hazard mm -hmm. and how you prepare for it so mm -hmm. obviously if there's a tornado or a microburst you get yeah. in the basement and you get under a stairwell um or if you if you have um, an ice storm and things like that, make sure you know how to turn off the power and sure. things like that, and you know able to stay warm. And if something happens to your house, that tree was huge that fell on Margie's house. Right. That you know that right. it wasn't necessarily safe to inhabit it. You right. know, so those are things. So you know, if there was a severe ice storm, the middle school would I'm, right. I'm quite sure would open. But also have an alternative plan. I mean, have right. friends and families have a plan for your communication. Animals. Yeah. Right. Your 
your animals are key. So, so, right. so you would want to do some kind of evacuation plan. Yeah. yeah. And, and practice. And, and have a meeting place for right. your family right. members. Now, I, mean, I mean, we teach being on the fire. The fire. We were always yeah. teaching, you know, if there's a fire, you right. get out. If yeah. exactly. you meet by the big tree, you yep. meet at right. Bobby Joe's house or yep. whatever. Yep. And teach but your kids. When you're talking a, a bigger disaster, such as a hurricane, such as right. whatever, and now you have to get out of there. Yeah. Where do you go? How That's do you pre planning. Do you... And I mean, actually, uh, Mass 211 is a mm. great resource for that. Yes, so they, they would have information. So, Mass 211, you can dial that. And if they have any shelters open in the area, mm. they will have that. Um, that's a statewide that's resource. Wonderful. And so that is one thing to kind of keep in mind. You don't want to be calling 911 unless it's an emergency. Exactly. Right. Because those first responders need to be able to do other things. That's wonderful. But Mass 211, you know, again, being prepared. I mean, watch the weather. You know, know what's, have an awareness of your surroundings right. and, and, and be prepared and teach your children how to be prepared. I mean, Perfect. I have a, you know, like how to evacuate my home if right. I can't get out of downstairs. Sure. If there's a fire downstairs, right. I have a ladder upstairs and we go out the back. So, I mean, right. you know, ever since Celie was little, we've planned those, we've done our own drills in the house and th she thought that was awesome. She's grown <laughs> up with that. She's a middle we've schooler. Worked them. We've yeah. worked with them. We've worked with our kids. Yeah. So rope ladder. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, those are things that are really important to teach your kids that yeah. awareness and, and teach kids to take care of other kids. Absolutely. You, you know what I mean? That It is a community effort when something like that happens and, you know, have have the kids have phone numbers of neighbors and friends mm -hmm. and people right. out of state. That's that communication plan that you have with your children because what if they can't get in touch with you? Right. I mean, and Something communications happens you're is not home. the number one issue in yeah. every disaster. Yeah. That's the number one issue. Well, and I know in 9-11, nine, nine mm -hmm. oh, my, my family was all, not my family, my my ex-husband's family was in New York. Yep. So I was trying Everything's to call done. them and make sure everyone was okay. Right. I couldn't get through. Even Boston Marathon, they shut every they all shut the communication. The phones, yeah, yeah, they uh -huh. shut off the phones yeah. because they didn't they didn't know if we'd set off another bomb. Which, or, which yeah. and at a time like yeah. that when we didn't have, we still had interoperability, but it was harder. They the yeah. local uh, resources that were there to help we're lost huge. their main communications oh, because they lost the phones. Now. We've learned from that, yep. and now the communications have changed. So we're constantly building. Sure, that and we learn and from and best practices. And, and you right. learn from all the yeah. mistakes, right? Or all the and, past practices. And that's where you drill too. I mean, right. those drills that you know that are happened down the Cape and Boston, Logan mm -hmm. Airport, things like that. That's we all learn. Even from something those drills. simple as a tabletop exercise, oh, yeah. like this here, and drilling and going yeah. over it. I do out. tabletops constantly yeah. with my units, and that's something we do. Sheltering tabletops, we do mass casualty, field yeah. triage tabletops, mm -hmm. emergency dispensing site tabletops. And the, the schools do Alice drills mm -hmm. all the yeah. time. Exactly. You know, yeah, they do fire so we practice. Yeah. The schools exactly. practice what to do. Yeah. You know, in in a disaster and lockdown and yeah. you know fire drills all the time. So but when we learn, I mean, that's yeah. the thing, and, and those best practices are important. But as a community member, it's your responsibility to right. take care of your family family sure. you know and make sure that you mm -hmm. don't become a problem um right. you know unless you absolutely need us and, right. and that's I mean, something yeah, you could get stuck but you, yeah you know, don't be a burden so everyone they should have them help us or help us yeah you so, know come help so us so what we take from this you want to be prepared yeah. right mm -hmm. you want to have a plan mm -hmm. and you want to uh make sure that you um uh, learn how to get that information through the technology of today from either yeah. the ping, ping notifications yep. or ready. Local ready. local ready.gov. Ready. 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 Is, is that just it's has amazing. everything you need. Everything. Yeah. R-E-A-D-Y.gov. I, I put together my first bug out bag when, <laughs> way back when, <laughs> when I started when, here. When Lisa started here and she was making the training films on how to do it and so forth. Mm -hmm. and my so first, can you explain to everyone what a, what a bug out bag well, basically is? Basically, a bug out bag is things that you need to last for 72 hours. That's your water and your clothes. So it's a gallon? Per person, per, yeah, per, per day. day. So you want to make a bag for each person. You, yep. make, you make the kids their own. Their backpacks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to carry some probably, but let them carry, make right. it for them. Clothing, you want clothing that is going to be for Fleece, everything. All yep. seasons, something Socks. that is going to... Resist the well, it's water, like going camping. Breakers. Yeah, it's like camping, but and some smaller. really cheaper. Those thermal blankets. Yeah, I mean, those, you can, you yeah. can all the little the, kits you need, though the waterproof matches, mm -hmm. um, all these little things Iodine you need. Tablets, you I mean, can go to any website 
quick Anything. care. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. That, and Rady.gov has recommendations on where to buy Absolutely. your kits. Absolutely. The newest, the newest technology, which wasn't out back then. Right, right. But the, the water bottles that you basically put into the, the nasty stream. Yeah. Right? Oh, and then yeah. it filters yeah. it and you drink it. And there's fries. Yeah. There's so many things. There's so many things. And there's hand, I mean, there's all yeah, kinds like of Yeah, like the hand crank. Flashlight, radio, yeah. bat, uh, and cell phone charger. another thing that we didn't mention is people that have medications, they need to make sure mm -hmm. that they have their medications with them and a list of it. Sure. Because that also presents a problem for us at the shelters when they come in. If Absolutely. They, if we don't know what their medications are, their right. frequency. And then another thing um, that we do, and this is a tough topic, is we deal with a lot of substance abuse in oh. um, shelters too. So right. that is another thing. So they don't have their drugs in them. Yeah, so we about talk them. about detoxing. So oh. there are, you know, there's a lot of factors of what you mm. see in a shelter. You know, again, you know, that's what we're trained to deal with. But again, you know, that is a reality of our society. So, so I have to say, you are an amazing person, which I already knew because oh. you're my neighbor. <laughs> yeah. But just thinking about all of what you just talked about and and thinking of you on the front lines in this kind of situation, yeah. that's an amazing, thank you, strong, helpful, thank you, angel kind of thing to do. Oh. I mean, seriously, because thank you're you. you're their lifeline, yeah. and people who haven't been prepared, or people who are ill, right. or people who you know Those are, the folks are that stuck need us. Yeah. Right. without their bug out bag because right. they're in their car on the flooded road, <laughs> you know. So and it's easy to have a bug out bag in your car, but so a lot easy. of folks, I mean our oxygen on oxygen concentrators right. or yeah. you know that's another thing that you know when something happens i want to ask people to look after their neighbors and check in on exactly. their neighbors exactly elderly you know, or if you know, sick or we, single or? our neighborhood has transferred over but we had elderly on our street sure. for yeah. many years yeah. Yeah. so the you know that's mm. something that's very important as neighbors you know if you can help others right. that's another important factor well right. we're all out of time yes. on this segment here so uh, thank you very much it's, you're sticking Stratus. around yes um, Stay around. Yep, and yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. Leaf something peeping. more happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. foliage. Yeah. All foliage <laughs> trips, and where do you want to go? We'll be right back. Great. This week on Business Matters, Tim Kilduff finds out why Statline Brewing owner Ted Twinney calls Hopkin and home. Lives with in terms of putting down our new roots here. So uh, the people, obviously, there's a lot of things that Hopkinton offers that brings that in, from the parks to the schools to uh, the community and history here, the race. Uh, there's so many things that I think make it, you know, kind of a fun uh, and special place to be. This week on HCAM, Naturalist John Root presents the majesty and mystery of crop circles. Here we have a circle that seems to be a stand-in for the monument. Doesn't it symbolize, symbolize the monument with a circle around it to echo that circle? In July 1990, this was so extraordinary that people gave it a new word, pictogram. And how can we call that a crop circle anymore, right? That was a pictogram. This week, uh, concerts on the common. Hopkins Zone, Zone, Barbara Kessler plays her original music in some covers on the gazebo. And we're back. Welcome back to the Jen and Margie show with guest host Mike Terosian and our Mike fabulous. And yeah, I like Mike and Margie. Mike and Margie, show. Mike and Margie yeah. show. Eminem, I like Eminem. <laughs> um, and Lisa Jackson has joined us um, very helpfully talking about the traffic calming issue in the first segment. Lots of great information in our discussion of disasters and what do we do if there's a hurricane and how to be prepared. Um, and then our last topic is going to be leaf peeping. Where's your favorite fall foliage drive? We have a motorcycle rider here. We have a horseback rider here. And I drive a car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so um, if you have ideas on where your favorite route is, please call us, 508-435-7880 to join the conversation. Or live at hchem.tv is our email. Um, I think we'll start with Mike on yeah. the bike. 
On the bike, my favorite place to to look at leaves is uh, has to be the White Mountains. Mm. Go through that Canyon Mangus Highway. That is and, so beautiful. Yeah, with and the, then you get the bonus of maybe an eagle, maybe a moose, okay. or Plus a bear. all the streams on the edge the that you streams, pull over. The streams, it's just, yeah. uh, they have some of the best points to look at. Uh, it, plus uh, so, your vista's up high. Right. right. The pool sure. house, too. And I think because we had such a wet season uh whatever i, I think it's going to be a little delayed and maybe stretched on yeah. too right. instead of the nice dry ones where it comes early and yeah. it goes quick yeah. well i um i saw a couple of i looked online yep. of course and um there's something called budget travel that had a few ideas um something called vermontvacation.com had a whole mm. list of routes oh, um yeah. Top down, they said Northeast Kingdom Byway, St. Johnsbury to Newport and Jay, Route 120 touring Northwest Lake Carmi State Park, Route 105, long list of things That's there, north, yeah. VermontVacation.com. Yeah. And then I know Route 2, because oh, I used to go to beautiful. UMass, I lived in yeah. UMass, and I loved seeing the foliage yeah. in the hills there. So Route 2 out that way it is a great Berkshires. thing. Berkshires. And Berkshires yeah. and Mount Greylock. Yeah. And then um, there's something, uh, Blackstone Valley from Worcester to Providence, there's sure. a, that road. Blue Hills Reservation is a 6,000 acre great. state yeah. park that's Milton Quincy, Braintree, yep. Canton, Randolph, and Dedham. High Vis Yeah, Wachusett. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah, there's lots of... Yeah, a lot of things around here, amazing. And even just driving out the pike, right. you see the different... And in foliage. Hawkinson, we have amazing foliage. Yeah, I was going to say, mean, we're, what is yeah, your favorite trail? I mean, as a in, horse, uh, I mean, and, and, and I'm grateful because I think I have a bird's eye view of it because I don't have to look down <laughs> or look at the road because right. the horse is, is Doing in that. essence, driving. And ever since Celia was a little kid, we used to pick leaves off and laminate them. Nice, and, we do that too. Yeah, so it's like so fun. But, it, you know, like Hawkinson State Park, Ashland State Park, Whitehall. Um, they're all amazing, amazing places to yep. see foliage. You know, and, and in your neighborhood streets, our right. scenic byways. I, I was mean, just going to say one of my favorite places <laughs> to see that when I'm not looking for it yeah. is at the right time of day is driving down yeah. Cedar Street, down yeah. 85. Oh, right. Going down the hill the way the sun hits our, it. Yeah, it's really and yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's great right there. But, I mean, that's only a minute. Well, and there's but, also Wasika. Yeah. Yeah, sanctuary sure. isn't oh, that on Clinton? Clinton. Yep. That's Holliston. Yeah, yep. Wasika. Yep. You just go down Clinton, keep going. It's on the left, I think. Sure. And then Barry Broadmoor. Acres, yeah. yeah, Broadmoor. Broadmoor you get Elm Bank. Yeah. Elm Bank and uh, Wilson. And Garden Cameron in the Woods. Woods. Yeah. yeah. Cameron, Cameron Woods, right here in Hoppington. Yeah. So there's like Cameron a million. Places, yeah. 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 And the and Center, Center Trail, Trail, right? Yeah. yeah. Center Trail. Center Trail yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. Trail. And then John Ritz in the in the booth uh, was telling me about an Amtrak down Easter. That goes from here to Brunswick, Maine. Mm. Has a dome car dome from the car. 1950s. Oh, be like riding the horse. Which is it. yeah, dome yeah. car. So you're up even higher, awesome. and it sounded like all glass that you could be looking wow. out. Um, and if he wanted to add anything from the sound booth, he could do that because I have not ex haven't experienced no. that. Got oh, that's I got amazing. it all. Okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah. the thing is, I mean, it's even when you're a passenger. I mean, when you're driving, you have to pay attention. But when you're a yeah. passenger, just look. So much better. I know. Yeah. And I, ironically, better. I like it when it rains. Yes. So I like the oh. the, bar, the the tree is black and then you know dark oh, yeah, and then sure. with the the wet leaves, I always think that's very beautiful and it changes. I mean, the colors start out really vibrant. Right. And like in spots, and then I mean, I walk in the woods, and I mean, I ride probably three days a week in the woods, so yeah. I'm always. Yeah. Yeah. And then fall is one of my favorite times. Yeah. And I love the crunch of the leaves. And, I, and the, the smell. Yeah, the smell. And, 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 well, I let's agree not get into about, the pumpkin spice discussion. Yeah, no, 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 no we're not it's, talking about okay. We're talking about leaf smell. Good, yeah. right. But um, I agree with you. And I think on a, on a rainy or a gray day, mm -hmm. the, the, the gray. The contrast. Right, the gray um, bark, but also the oranges of the leaves are right. that much more Vibrant. vivid. Yeah, and the I yellows think, and the reds. Against the gray of the background. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I think I also have to say that when I lived on Lake Maspinock and I was on, oh, on that yeah, lake. yeah, looking at the other side, sure. the oh, Upton sure. side yep. of Crockett the Road. water. Yeah. Right. And it's, from a, it's a hill. Incredibly yep. beautiful, yeah. just the whole along the lake. So even getting out on Lake Maspinock, obviously Lake Whitehall, yeah. um, to be able to be we in the so middle. We have so many places in, in yep. Hopkinton that you can just walk out your door. Unbelievable. And, and the Hopkinton Trails Club organizes hikes. Um, they have yes. a, a huge amount of information. Um, John, yeah, you know something.
started about the Hopkins Trails Club, yeah. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you start that about 13 years ago? Yeah, I yeah. did, but yeah, you know. But a lot then, of things happened 13 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy. Yeah. She got busy then. Yeah, yeah. How old is Celia? Yeah, she's 13. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm like, I have a kid, I got all this stuff to do. But, but yeah, so, you know, it's just a, it's a great place. You know, like in Hopkinton, there's so many places. But the Hopkinton yeah. Trails Club, it's, I think, John, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but I think oh. it's HopkintonTrails.com. It's a Comcast. HopkintonTrailsClub.com. Yes. Hopkinton. Trails Club. Trails yeah, Club. and John manages the website, and he's yep. done it for many, many years. Um, they have so much information. They have maps of the trails. They have pictures of the hikes. Um, they do trail cleanup days. There's, I mean, it's an amazing resource that we have here in our community. And it's not just for trail riders. No. It's for no, walkers. It's really and, walkers. And I hikers. know that Halt, also Hopkins yeah. Area Land Trust, yep. has a lot of... Um, right trails under they there. They do, and there's a lot of halt trails also in Hopkinton. So, I mean, all you have to do is get out We're your door. We are so lucky. Oh, Hopkinton's amazing. And um, actually online, um, on John's website, there's a ton. You, you can see an image of all the trails, but just yeah. look out your door. I mean, like, you, there's trails. There's all kinds of little... Hopkinton Area Land Trust has little pockets here and there. Yeah. A lot of developments have um, trails that go around it. The... Legacy Farms, the new development there. I ride on some of those trails that oh, go in the back, good. so those have been developed good. and and moving along. Um, so there's and I know the Upper Charles Rail Trail, yes, or Upper Charles that's Trail, part of the was trying trail. to connect to the Milford Trail system to go right. over to. I don't know if that's that's how a that's, little tricky. Um, yeah, because that's a lot tricky. things yeah, are in the way, and that's that's been something we've talked about for years and years. Yeah, we bought um, the town worked with Betty Wyckoff yes. um, she and it was from Granite Street yeah. to where the Milford Rail Trails um, is you know between that little section but right. then from Granite Street across to Teresa Road to um, Claflin I think it's yep. Claflin Street yep. no it's not Claflin Street um, Chamberlain Chamberlain yes so that is a tough area because you right. have all those cul-de-sacs right and I mean now that we're building the elementary school there it may behoove us to you know do yeah, a wider side. sidewalk uh -huh. and just have that as part of that connectivity because Holliston's sure. done it you know Ashland I ride on their piece of it they Beautiful. haven't yeah I mean it's not open per se but I mean there is an opportunity to do that um, 26 mile loop mm -hmm. and it's you know it, okay <laughs> so we have had so much fun that we are out of time <laughs> yeah. and we want to thank Lisa Jackson for joining us thank and you. our fabulous co-host guest thanks host thanks for having me this Mike. week and Jim thank you for letting me sit in for you and please <laughs> join us next time at the Jen and Margie show we are probably going to talk about some more I know we are going to talk about some more exciting things one thing on my mind is what's happening on Saddle Hill goodbye. Road goodbye. and goodbye Bye. till Bye. next time Bye.